Screensavers. Saving our CRT screens from phosphor burns since the dark ages. Nowadays, screensavers are more for frivolous entertainment, but back when monitors were as deep as they were wide, the cathode ray tube electron gun could erode the phosphor screen coating when showing a persistent image for a long period of time, creating a ghost image which would never leave. A bit like how concentrating a ray of sunlight on a particular spot will eventually burn it. However, move that spot around and no damage will be done. I, for one, heavily associate screensavers with Microsoft Windows 3.1. Mainly because that's the environment I first experienced them as a native operating system feature. But screensavers have been with us for a good while before that. The concept of a screensaver was even alluded to in the 1961 Robert Heinlein novel Stranger in a Strange Land. They went to the living room. Jill sat at his feet and they applied themselves to martinis. Opposite his chair was a stereo vision tank disguised as an aquarium. He switched it on. Guppies and tetras gave way to the face of the well-known windchill Augustus Greaves. This clearly seems more for artistic and aesthetic purposes rather than trying to prevent any kind of screen burn. This is of course a book which involves Martians after all. In 1979, the Atari 400 and 800 range of computers would initiate a screensaver-like routine if they were left inactive for too long, a feature which was also present in certain games for the Atari 2600, such as Combat or Breakout, saving lounge televisions from ruin and the game's console from being thrown in the bin by raging parents. In 1983, the Apple Lisa came with a built-in screen blanking routine that would activate after a time which could be manipulated by the user. But in this video, I want to explore one small collection of screensavers created especially for Microsoft DOS. Now, DOS may not evoke feelings of a need for a screensaving application. I mean, most of the screen is black anyway. But then most of the badly burnt screens I've seen over the years have held the mark of that unmistakable command prompt, perhaps showing a directory listing or even the border of a text-based editing program. After all, the contrast of bright text on a black backdrop is a stark contrast and therefore the perfect perpetrator for burning. So the first application coined with the term screensaver was purportedly written in 1983 for DOS by John Socher, the creator of Norton Commander, which itself had a built-in Starfield screensaver, and it was simply called ScreenSave. It was a terminate and stay resident program, which after being initially executed allowed it to trigger the blackout routine after three minutes of inactivity, leaving the operator secure and safe in the knowledge that their screen would be as fresh as a daisy when they came back to it. Various other programs then followed. Some terminate and stay resident, but the vast majority need to be manually run by the user before leaving their desk. So. Let's begin with this classic from 1989, written by G. McPhail. This freeware screensaver is one of those on-demand programs, revealing a small collection of flies ambling around a zapper. Once in a while, the fly algorithm will cause a blighter to hit the zapper, for which we are rewarded with sound. This is 1989 excitement right here, and to be honest, I could have watched this for hours, or at least just left it running on my screen for hours. The only real problem is this static floor, pole and zapper. They don't make for a great screensaver, but being cast in dull colours does reduce their burning potential. Next by Bob Siegel, I. The eye is apparently observing what's going on in the world today, and given this assignment, it looks suitably horrified at what it sees, so we can presume it's working, just sitting there, judging us all in a well of disdain and contempt. 
The eye will occasionally expand, and if you dare to press a key, a good degree of bulging will occur, along with a sound implying you should probably stop interrupting its observation. Escape will return you to the DOS prompt. Let it rain with rain.exe, another 1989 affair, this time by Jay Worley. This little program simulates multicoloured raindrops falling onto your screen. You get a random background colour each time you start, whilst remaining smug and secure in the knowledge that you own a VGA graphics card capable of displaying an unprecedented or almost unprecedented amount of colours. And sticking with the 256 colours offered by VGA, we have Tunnel, a trippy multicoloured experience, which would have blown EGA and CGA owners back into their caves of despair. Now here's one of my personal favourites, this spent a lot of time on my screen, as I ate my tea in front of Games Master, safely secure that my screen would be in pristine condition when I returned. Plasma starts out by creating an image which reminds me of global hypercolour t-shirts. Once created, a colour cycle operation is repeated, creating this trance-inducing effect. Once created, this image is saved as Plasma.img, but you can delete this and start again, or just run it with the existing image in the future for rapid entry into this hypercolour dream world. Okay, just to round off this colour bonanza, we have VGA Glow, a more fractal inspired affair which has a number of settings and colour palette swaps. Now, this could have entertained me for a day, maybe two days back in the 90s, in fact it still might. Alright, let's have a look at some more fun screensavers. Screensavers with options. Everyone needs a virtual fish tank in their lives. If you proclaim that you don't, then you're lying. It harks even back to that novel I mentioned earlier. So what better than Aquarium by Ron Gray, version 1.045. This version is from 1992 and boy, does it offer some customization options. As well as choosing exactly what is in the tank, you can opt for a blue or black background, you can have wallpaper, you can even choose to show the tank wraparound with bubbles and the floor, all that malarkey. But of course, you, like I, want to see the tank with every single option enabled. All of the things. And this is what it looks like. Isn't it? A glorious feat for the eyes and senses. So many fish packed so densely in an EGA high resolution tank, and with such a tiny frame rate. This is realism that would have been unfathomable in the 1980s. I can only hope that this is the exact image in Robert Heinlein's mind when he wrote Stranger in a Strange Land. The README file even says, because Aquarium is a real attention getter. To be fair, it did keep my undivided attention for a good hour. Okay, I've got a few more to show you. Screamer is a memory resident key activated screensaver which actually locks your computer. Should an intruder attempt to gain access and not enter the correct unlock key, they'll be graced with this message. God, I miss DOS programs. Fire does a pretty good job at simulating fire, and even shows us our average frame rate of 2 frames per second. Bush gives us the original George Bush in all his facial glory. In a mission is one of those all time classics, a star field with some nicely coloured pixels. Fantasy is worth a mention, and not just because it was coded in Quick Basic, but because it creates some nice effects, and I'm particularly fond on the fact it doesn't bother removing the previous graphic entirely from the screen before starting a new one. Kind of like, yeah that'll do, let's move on. Snow is actually a memory resident screensaver written in 1995 by Kevin Krosnick, which provides a quite realistic representation of TV static which is both attention grabbing and perfect for pretending that your PC actually has a TV card. Because come on, we all pretended stuff like that didn't we? Yeah, yeah of course we did. 
And it's not like DOS screensavers died in the 90s, because this one by Bruno Felix Resende Ribeiro called DC Matrix is from 2015, and in its own words, is a program designed to decode the matrix into decimal. It is based on the premise that it's easier for people to become proficient in interpreting the matrix code if, instead of dealing with very cryptic symbols rolling down the screen, they could deal with static and familiar symbols. I don't know about you, but yes, I think I'm starting to make something out. No, I can see f all, but it's cool nonetheless. Now, there are so many more DOS screensavers than what I've demonstrated here, and many cross over into the demo scene. Programs like Nightbird and Sparkwood by Nicholas Centani were used to showcase the XYZ++ 3D graphics library in 1993, whilst LS Dino, or Dino was a showcase in itself of VGA capabilities. But before I draw this DOS screensaver escapade to an end, there's one more thing to discuss, and that is After Dark for DOS. Now, After Dark is the popular screen saving program created by Berkeley Systems in 1989 for the Macintosh and later in 1991 for Microsoft Windows. I'll cover this in more detail in the next video when I look at screen savers in GUIs. But this DOS version was actually released after the Windows version in 1993, mainly because DOS was still incredibly popular even in this post Windows 3.1 world. The DOS version is memory resident, it has a lot of options, but most importantly it retains many of the screensavers from the Windows version. So I will leave you with some After Dark, and hopefully catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching this foray into DOS screensavers. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to click a different video, you can. You can also subscribe. Giving it a thumbs up or down helps massively. And if you want to support my channel, you can through Patreon. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great evening.